Hello everyone, and welcome to the best of things. This is the first of our upcoming essay videos that we'll be making for the channel, where we'll be discussing selected topics that have shaped history and pop culture as we know it. And we'll start off our video with a very well-known Filipino biopic entitled, General Luna. Released on September 9th of 2015, General Luna was directed by Gerald Tarrig and stars John Arcilia, Aaron Villaflor, Mon Confiado, and Epi Kizan. On its initial release, the movie became the highest-grossing Filipino biopic of all time, and received critical acclaim for Arcilia's outstanding portrayal, cinematography, quotable lines and its engaging plot. The movie begins in 1898, where the Filipino government is all clueless on the presence of the Americans, after they've declared the country's independence from the 333-year rule from Spain. Unknowingly to them, that their country was sold for $20 million to the Americans. Welcome to Manila, man. She's ours. The Philippine President Emilio Aguinaldo and its Prime Minister, Apolinario Mabini, gets a rude awakening when they've received the news that the cities of Manila are now under American control, which eventually started the Philippine-American War. Adelante, compatriotas. Ang magtagumpay o mamatay. As General Antonio Luna and his troops embark on an arduous campaign against the invading American forces, he also discharges a disloyal battalion from Kawit while assembling an army of 4,000 and an elite of sharpshooters, much to the dismay of the president. As the war rages on, the Filipino elites led by Felipe Buencamino and Pedro Paterno proposes to the administration for an autonomous territory under the U.S., which angered Luna and arrests them for treason. With his actions, Luna's campaign begins to be undermined, led by the troops of General Mascardo, who are much more loyal to the president. Their internal conflict gave the Americans to advance steadily as the unmanned Filipino troops retreated to the north. Kalaban ang kalaban. Kalaban ang kakampi. Defeated and weary in battle, Luna files for his resignation because of the news that the elites in Mascardo were bailed out for their crimes. But President Aguinaldo refused and instead accepted his request to establish a military base in the north in order to console him. As the administration is set to reorganize in the president's new headquarters in Cabanatuan, Luna receives a telegram invitation summoning him to attend, only to arrive and see no one but Buencamino who is inside the president's room, which infuriates him. As Luna is about to leave, he was then ambushed and slowly killed alongside Colonel Roman, by the Kawit battalion that they've discharged during the war. His remaining loyal troops were also disarmed and executed by the president's newly appointed General Gregorio del Pilar, thus ending the campaign that he had established from the beginning. Ironically, they were buried with full military honors by their killers, however, the inquests exonerate the Kawit battalion and were never caught. And President Aguinaldo denies of his involvement. Looking back, the film's themes resonates with lots of the Filipino viewers especially the millennials, which they labeled Luna as their national hero for their generation. While the script is quite preachy, the themes of patriotism against an incompetent government is ever prevalent, especially the nature of cronyism and regionalism. The scene where the dead Luna and Colonel Roman being dragged across the courtyard, is similar in a manner highly reminiscent of the Spoliarium an internationally acclaimed artwork which was painted in 1884 by Luna's own brother, Juan Luna. The portrayal of President Aguinaldo was shown not merely in pure villainy, but as a man who is less initiative in nation-building and shows more bias on his cronies' best interests, all in the name of self-preservation. If he only got into the mind of Luna and earned his respect, perhaps the country's history and reputation could have changed, who knows? But the unlikely ones who have earned Luna's honor, 
came from the Americans themselves. It's unfortunate to see Luna's wish to die on the battlefield being subverted by his own kind. Just like a lion being maimed and slowly eaten by a bunch of hyenas. In closing, the point of bickering and pointing fingers on who's to blame is pointless. Everyone's to blame, when one still refused to learn from a nation's history and its four founding fathers. One thing's for sure, the learning never stops, and the mistakes will go on and on, until the day, when one surely makes some very big difference in the country. We hope you all enjoyed this video essay that we've made, make sure to like or comment and subscribe to our channel, and we look forward to seeing you all again.